What up everybody, this is Jay Winfield. As you may or may not know, I apologize for being late yet again. It's time to give you my thoughts on The Batman, starring Robert Patterson, directed by Matt Reeves. This is my first time seeing a movie in IMAX in the inside theater since the pandemic. Being that this is a Batman movie, and the way Batman movies have been over the past decade plus, or anything Batman themed, we had a feeling that this was going to be a dark movie. And I don't mean in terms of just tone, I mean in terms of lighting. Drive-ins aren't always the best option for those. Not to my surprise, there's a bunch of mixed reviews from fans and people I know personally. Even if I don't agree with them, I understand and it's all good because What's the point of having opinions if everybody is going to have the same one? I loved a lot of things about this movie. Once it was announced that Robert Pattinson was being casted, everybody like threw all the Twilight stuff at him, even though that was many years ago. I've seen a lot of things Robert Pattinson has been in since then, and he's really great. Like He really commits to his roles, and he really got chops, Like if you pay attention or if you've seen any of the things he's been in. And Twilight wasn't his fault. Then once we got our first looks at him with the suit and the Batmobile, then even more fire started heading this way. I won't lie. I was definitely agreeing with a lot of the you know initial reactions and still kind of the same way about his suit and oh it doesn't look cool or it doesn't look intimidating. Um, you know, just going by comparison to all the other Batman portrayals we've had that, you know, whether you like the Batman cast or not, usually they have a pretty cool suit or they look intimidating or their car, the Batmobile is fire, whichever way you want to look at it. Um, so I understood. And yes, context matters watching the movie and also hearing the explanations of this portrayal being a uh, Batman when he's first starting at the experience cape crusader that we've grown up on or we've seen so many other movies about and it makes perfect sense i wouldn't say i'm the biggest batman nerd there are people that are bigger than me but i do love me some batman so there's a thing that i do or i like to do whenever a batman related movie comes out and that's revisit batman the animated series i like to watch episodes of batman the animated series because to me, even including comics and all that, it's the quickest and best way for me to, and the best reference for me to get ready for a Batman movie. Because the animated series just has so many things about Batman, everything about Batman pretty much in that series, which I know it's really hard to do in movies, especially in like one movie, but there are certain things Batman does, certain characteristics and that I wish at least a couple of those things, a few of those things really are on display in the Batman portrayal that I'm about to watch. Thankfully, I must say there were quite a few. Uh, there was a lot of things that I will honestly say, even though I loved a lot of previous portrayals of Batman, that I always felt like there hasn't been like a perfect, like flawless, you know, Batman. Meaning like, even though we've had great movies in the past, there's, Batman is so many different things. Like he's so many different things, which is why he's a superhero, even though he's a regular human being. But it's like a lot of the things that he's able to do and things he does kind of makes him not a regular human being at all, really, if you think about it. So I understand that it's really hard to incorporate all those things into movies. But with that also comes with the fact that you can always improve in certain areas on a Batman. One of the biggest things for me is the detective aspect. Batman has always been a detective. And I feel like in a lot of past movies, they either just flirted with it a little bit or didn't include much of that at all. And this movie went fully there, like every aspect. It's like he's always trying to figure out a crime and it shows his supreme intelligence when he's talking to other people 
other detectives, other uh, cops, or whoever is trying to figure out the case, and he just knows things that they don't know, or he's just able to think faster than everybody else. And I felt like that really was lacking in a lot of previous Batman movies, and I felt really good about that being on display in this one. So, huge thumbs up for that one. The cast was amazing. I was ready for the cast like as soon as I saw the trailer, as soon as I saw who was in the movie. Zoe Kravitz was a perfect Catwoman to me. She was perfect. Um, that's one of the other things that I felt like was lacking a bit. Um, I know we got into it a little bit with The Dark Knight Rises, but ever since Batman Returns, I feel like we never really got that, you know, that strong revisit of Batman and Catwoman's relationship, their complicated relationship. I love how much they focused on that in this movie. It made me feel like I was watching the animated series. Zoe had a down pack, she had the attitude, she had the walk, she had the look. The look was perfect. And she just has all the characteristics that I'd like to see in the Catwoman. She's on fire right now. Andy Serkis as Alfred was great. I don't think there's been a bad Alfred performance that I could think of, honestly. But that doesn't take away from pointing out every time Alfred is good. And he was great as Alfred. He was sarcastic. His relationship with Bruce Wayne I love the chemistry that they had. Um, that's a really obviously super important thing in a Batman movie. Jeffrey Wright as Commissioner Gordon was amazing. I'm a really big Jeffrey Wright fan. This dude can act. I think he's one of the best actors on earth, personally. And I never thought of him as a Commissioner Gordon, but that was perfect casting. He, he was a great choice for that. It made perfect sense to me. And, uh, he was just as amazing as he always is. I was really happy about like the fact that they have two black castings that were perfect for the role. I'm always happy about representation, but I'm one of those people that I don't want the representation if it's just to say, oh, we got somebody black. Like here, we, we got somebody black. It's like, no, I want them to be perfect for the role. And they both were, even though we've had other black cat women in the past, they were perfect for their roles. And they really were two of the brightest spots in the movie. Colin Farrell's Penguin was hilarious. It did really well with the humor in this one too. Like the humor, it wasn't, it wasn't a whole lot of it, but the humor that was there, I thought it was funny, which always feels good. And Colin Farrell was a huge part of that. I thought about this for a while, but this is probably the the least cheesy Batman movie I've ever seen. And that I don't mean that the movies before themselves are cheesy. It's just that all of them, even in the Dark Knight trilogy, um, there always seems to be a need to incorporate some cheesy dialogue. I don't know what it is, but like every superhero movie has them. And for the first time, I felt like, wow, this is, I, I feel, I take this pretty seriously, like the whole way through. And I love that because I always felt like the Batman movie, if you're going to do a realistic take on it and try to be darker and grittier, which they always say. And it, it really was like for the time when you look back at them, they all were darker and grittier than the previous ones. And but I always felt like if it's going to be darker and grittier, you know, I want it to be like serious for the most part, at least 90% of it be serious because it's like, we don't have a whole lot of that. Like, I feel like we have a lot of superhero movies now that, you know, they have all the cheesy dialogue. They have all the nonstop action and the colorfulness and things like that. It's like, we need, I feel like, at least I personally, I need <laughs> movies like this to keep everything balanced and, they did a great job. It's similar to the Joker in 2019. That was a great movie. It's, it's similar vibes to that for me. People that didn't like it, a lot of them said it was slow. And and I was I, I didn't think it was slow. You know, it was like a three hour movie, which is long, but I personally didn't feel like it was three hours. Um, maybe it's because I was that interested in even the small little details in the movie. 
I just thought it was great, all of it. Um, I was actually surprised with how how attentive I was <laughs> to everything, like every step of the movie, every single scene. Not many people know this about me, but I'm a really big Riddler fan. Riddler, since I was little, has been maybe my favorite Batman villain. He might not be the greatest Batman villain, but he's always been my favorite just because riddles, puzzles, whatever, his intelligence and the fact that he's so intelligent, he's so great that he could just kind of ruin Batman's life or ruin Gotham without actually even having to fight anybody. <laughs> they went a different direction with this Riddler, made him more of a realistic serial killer, which I never thought about that. I knew I wanted the Riddler back in a Batman movie, but I never thought about how they could do it and be a Riddler like Jim Carrey or a Riddler like from the animated series or from the comics. A lot of those versions, they wouldn't really make sense or you wouldn't be able to take it as seriously in a movie like this. So I actually liked the movie. I liked Paul Dano in this role. I thought he did a fantastic job. I first saw him in the movie Prisoners. So I didn't know he was actually playing the Riddler. So while watching the movie, I saw it and I was kind of shocked. I was like, oh, I know that dude. Everybody in this movie did a great job. As far as the nitpicks go of not liking the suit or the Batmobile isn't as cool as we've had in the past or whatever. It's like, I can understand those, but at the same time, I feel like there's more to making a good movie than just those things. And overall, this was a fantastic movie. And I can't wait to see what they do next. The score was amazing. I didn't really understand the Ave Maria part of it, but just the general score aside from that, I thought was great. Maybe there's something to that. I probably should research and see what that was about because it happened a lot um, but other than that I thought it was great let me know what you felt about the movie I know a lot of people have different opinions about it but I think it's really fun to talk about it because I'm not one of those people that think oh because your opinion is different from mine then you're stupid or something or you shouldn't be watching movies or stuff like that it's not that serious stay tuned for more videos and if you like this video please give it a like and subscribe and I'll see y'all next time peace <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.